Hey, it's Luke from Yoda One. I recently had a conversation with Steve Young. He's the founder of App Masters, and he helps developers grow their apps and games through marketing and ASO, especially. In the conversation, we talked about strategies for marketing. We talked about ASO. We talked about some trends, and we also focused on some very interesting tips and hacks for growing your app or growing your game. Really interesting stuff. I hope you enjoy the conversation. If you enjoy it, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. So, without further delay, let's get into the conversation. Steve, I appreciate you. I appreciate you getting on the show. Thank you for joining. Thanks for having me, Luke. Yeah, great to have you. But maybe the <laughs> best place to start would be just a quick background of you. I wonder if you could just talk a bit about how you got into apps in general and mm -hmm. and how you started uh, App Masters. Yes, yeah, so I started in apps in 2011 when my son was 18 months at the time and he was using a lot of educational apps like ABCs, phonics type of things, Luke. And I was like, whoa, this stuff is really working. And back then it was all paid stuff. Like shout out to Duck Duck Moose who did a phenomenal job of just dominating that space. And I was like, you know what? I want to see if I can do this. And so I tried to learn Objective-C. It was, yeah, Objective-C back then. Didn't mm -hmm. know what that was. I minored in computer science in college. And so I knew how to program a little bit. And it wasn't until I kind of came around this meetup that was actually coincidentally named Corona, where I was like, oh, I know how to do that. Because their script, it was a cross-platform the engine, and their script was based off of JavaScript. So I taught myself how to code. Just if you guys know Northern California, I taught myself how to code on BART while I was still working for a job. I was running marketing for a startup in San Francisco and then started publishing apps. And so it was all free at the time. The first app was getting thousands of downloads a day when Apple used to feature all new apps and then caught the bug, right? Started making premium apps, so paid apps, all in the educational space, all targeted towards my son. And one of the apps I built, I was like, you still around two years old. I was like, hey, Noah, check this app out. And he played around with it and then he hit the home button right away, Luke. He's like, I was like, oh, that's so oh, so crushing. Just, so crushing, man. But your own son. That, started I'll just keep it short but I uh, through that started making more and more apps was making about a thousand dollars a month so nice little side income just doing it on the side but in 2013 as someone who consumed a lot of podcasts I was like you know what I wanted to do a podcast I didn't know what to do it on and then I was like duh I have apps apps are continuing to grow let's just right. do a podcast on apps and so started really doing that nights and weekends while still working built up an audience who then started coming to me for marketing help and I started the podcast loop to learn from experts because I knew nothing about app marketing. I was more like content marketing, growth hacking type of thing right. in my day job. And so, but people started coming, enough started coming to me that I felt confident enough to, had a couple of different clients I was working with to leave my job and do this full time six months after starting the podcast. That's awesome. That's incredible. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. So I'm quite curious how much changed in the landscape, how much how how much change have you witnessed i guess maybe another way to put it in yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe we could focus on aso and how people optimize sure. their games i obviously the uh the ways that people making apps the ways that they make money has changed a lot in the last number of years so i'm curious just how much have you witnessed everything man i mean i was there from the beginning right if you think about yeah. it and so it's from if you really wanted to test me just to make sure I knew my chops, it's like back then it was paid paid apps, right? Like it was right. something the in-app purchases weren't even around yet. So everybody was making money off of like having a free version, a light version, and then hoping that people would upgrade by hitting the paid game. And so that's what people were doing. They had two different versions of their app. They had the light version, they had the paid version, right? right. And then slowly in-app purchases started coming around and then Obviously, we're all about subscription these days. From an ASO standpoint, man, back in the day, it used to be like 
let's repeat this keyword in this 256 character limit that we had on iOS. And that would be beneficial. And then Apple shrunk that to 50, I believe, and then back down to 30. And so we didn't have a short description back then. We just had a really, really long title or subtitle, I should say. But we had a really, really long title that we could play with and hack different things. And now these days, it's like, OK, now we have a title, subtitle, all that stuff. So certain things have remained the same. We can get into that if you want from an ASO hacking standpoint. But a lot has changed since I started. And I've seen certain friends go from like changing their business models from paid apps to in-app purchases to trying out subscriptions to eventually an affiliate type of model. But it's yes. like their business continue to grow as these changes. And they, they were modifying, pivoting, pivoting along the way. And, uh, you know, at Yoda One, we, we see a lot of people using ads and that being yeah. a, a, a great way to, for people to, uh, uh, to make money without necessarily having to do all of the work of relying on, let's say, a, a, an in-app purchase economy um, or, or a mix sure. of the two. Yeah. Well, maybe just, just focusing on ASO then for a second. So I'm curious where it is now now that you know it's a fairly mature space where let's say let's say 10 years ago or eight years ago maybe not nearly as much so if you want to if you want to really get the attention of apple say how do you how do you do that now when you're competing with so many other people doing the same thing, whether it's an education education app or a game or whatever, how do you how do you catch their attention? I think I mean it's very hard, right? Like obviously you you need good partnerships, so that's one thing. You need to just build a good app. So I'll get through all the 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 obvious. I'll be Captain Obvious there too. But I think if you want to sort of think about like different hacks, so one build a really cool app. Like I know you published Crossy Road, and they they did a really good job. And in my interview with Matthew Hall, who created who co created. Crossroad, they were, you know, they were making apps for a long time. I think too many times, especially game developers, they see a success of a cross road or color switch and think, that's so simple to make. I can do that. And they'll well, just look at Rovio. Look what road. happened with Rovio when with Angry Birds. Yeah. They didn't. I mean, that was how many how many 51. things did they try? Insane yeah. insane number of things that they tried before they hit on something. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a big company doing it, right? Like I had right. David Reichel, a friend of mine who created Color Switch, and that was his forty first, right? And it's like right. Yeah, like people think that it's just this overnight success and it's hardly the case. But what Matthew did was he's like, look, in the early days during the soft launch, he was really focused on retention. For games, right, that is super important. For subscription-based apps, the one metric that I tend to tell my audience to look at is monetization, how many people are converting, all that stuff. For games, it's a long cycle. Maybe you're going to monetize off of ads, like you said, Luke. And so you need people to continually come back unless you're going to do a voodoo type of game where it's just like short life cycle, go up in the charts, get as, make as much money as you can, and then it will eventually go away. But even then, I've talked to Voodoo and Catch App on my podcast, and you know they say the same thing. It's just like, you wanna build a good game that has good retention. So if that's all out of the way, one of the hacks to try to get Apple's attention is to one, go to WWDC. You know, Back the couple of years, because of the pandemic, it's all been virtual. And I always recommend, I'm like, hey, <laughs> it's virtual. Which means yeah, you, it's they, free. those tickets used to go in, in an hour. Now anybody can go, right? Look, those tickets were on random draw. Like when I went in 2016, it was like, hey, you're gonna you might randomly get selected right. to go. And then I did get selected. And I was like, oh shit, and now I'm out of sixteen hundred dollars. Like, dang, you know. But now it's been virtual. Go see an app store manager, talk to them, get to know them, get feedback from them, and then eventually make the changes that they told you to do and then go back out to them and say, Hey, Luke, thanks for all the suggestions I made. Find them on LinkedIn. They're not going to give you their email address or anything like that. Find them on LinkedIn this is what we did for one of our clients. We found them on LinkedIn said, Hey, Luke, thanks for all your suggestions. Here's what we did. We'd love to be considered for an Apple feature. And then we got game of the day through that. And so we had a couple of different clients. We say, told the same trick in, in person means a lot more too. And so in 2017, he was able to get a feature. In 2018, she was able to get a feature as App of the Day. So they both got the prominent Game of the Day and App of the Day type of features because that's, they were able to make that one-on-one -on -one connection. That's really a, a unique way of looking at it. I think I would imagine a lot of people just sort of say the sort of, if I build it, they will come 
uh, right. way of approaching it. And it, it's not that way in terms of success, but it's not that way in terms of getting featured as well. So just changing that frame of mind of actually, I need to connect with a human being. I need to talk to someone in person. I need to make myself known to these people because they're people at the end of the day. That's a, that's a, that's a great insight. Is, is there a fuzzy... another hack, Luke? Yes, you should, please. Yes, I'm all ears. <laughs> all right. This hasn't been as effective recently, but I'll give you one that we, we did. We actually ran Facebook ads targeting Apple employees in the Bay Area because all the app store managers and editors are in the Bay Area in California. And so we would run these ads that said, hey, Apple, you know, blah, blah, blah. So we call out the fact that it said, hey, Apple, and we try to get a feature that way. We got back in 2017, we ran this pretty successfully, but we got four different Apple features because what you guys have in the audience has to know is Apple will never tell you if or when you're going to get a feature, right? right. It's just going to pop up in the app store. And so when we're running these Facebook ads, we would just see them pop up. <laughs> For one client, it was like, it was an accessibility app and we saw a big, back in the day, it was just these banners, right? The app store wasn't constantly changing. There was no today tab. And so there's this big banner on the featured apps section and said, hey, accessibility apps, right? And I was like, holy crap, this is my client's perfect for this app. And so we would say, hey, Apple, your accessibility list is missing a key app. Da -da 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 is the only app that does, does this. And wouldn't you know, I kept checking, checking, checking that list every single day. And then one night we just popped up. And it's a list, right? So I can and that's guerrilla warfare. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, you, you gotta be, yeah. you gotta, you know, like you said, Luke, you can't just build it and they will come. You gotta tell Apple that they might be missing out on a key app. And so we we're able to get that feature. That's, that's really cool. So it was, was that, was that change in the app store? Was that net positive for most people? Did that, I mean, I would imagine that increased the opportunity for people to get features when, when Apple started doing the daily, the daily features. Was that, was that in 2017 that they started doing that? When, when did they make the big, the big change to the app store? I think it was yeah, around I forget then. what year. Yeah. No, I think it hurt actually. Really? It definitely hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Cause back then it would just be, it would refresh every Thursday, the new feature. So you have a week long life on that and it would just be one page and so mm. if you were able to get that on that list you can just ride that wave now you have to be an app of the day game of the day to see any type of like really good results from an apple feature if you get into the list like the new apps we love which is you know a couple of tabs away then it's nice but back in the day it was like a hundred thousand downloads for a games to be featured or apps to be featured. Now it's like maybe 10,000, 3,000, you know, it's it's very minimal now. So it's a huge drop off. Right. So if you just fewer, just a matter of fewer eyeballs on it in the way that it's more yeah. features, but but less impact for those features. Well, the features don't just don't last that long either. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. So it's like every day there's a new thing, but back then it was just like seven days, you get an Apple feature and then it was less places for people to go to, right? It was just, I think if I remember properly, it was just like one tab and then it was like all the features and then there'd be the top charts and all that stuff. And they just changed everything around. It was a universal, I remember it was a universal yeah. thing and it didn't feel as dynamic as it does now. So I think they wanted yeah, to feel more dynamic, but that's not necessarily positive for the developer. Interesting. What, okay, so so I'm, I think our audience is primarily focused on games. I don't think so. Yeah. I know so. So I'm going to I'm going to ask about that. Yeah, uh, how fuzzy is that line? Right? When you're when you're talking with someone who's built their first or second game as opposed to someone who's built their first or second app and they're looking to you for the, these guerrilla warfare tactics. Um, <laughs> hopefully it, Nothing, nothing more, uh, more severe than literally targeting them with ads. <laughs> that's, that's, that's genius. So, I mean, how much of it, how, how fuzzy is the line between them? Is it the same approach? Is it vastly different uh, in terms of ASO, maybe in terms of marketing as well? Yeah. I mean, with marketing, it is a little bit different, right? With, because with, with subscription based apps, I'm looking at a variety of things like how is the UI, what does the pricing page look like? What are we doing to like really convert our users, our downloads into paying customers, right? It's a shorter right. cycle. Like I feel like we could convert a lot of people right away. Whereas games, 
I don't, I haven't seen enough of the numbers personally, not that they don't exist. I haven't seen personally enough of the numbers to say all these tactics that we know will work from a subscription based app will work from a marketing perspective on the games. So with games, I'm like, okay, what's your retention rate like, right? Do you have some of the best practices that really get users back into a game? Maybe it's a starter pack. Maybe it's these daily rewards. Do you have virtual currency that forces people to be like using currency so that they get used to actually spending money in the app? So those are things that I'm looking for versus where if I look at an app, I'm like, okay, well, I know X, Y, and Z, this will convert right off the bat. Whereas game, I feel like it takes a longer time. And I, I'm look, what I'm looking for is, is the gameplay good, right? Just like the right. big publishers out there, and I'm sure you guys are looking at this too, is like, what's the retention? Give me the retention, right? For an app, I might, I might not care what the retention is because I know I can convert users with certain best practices. And so that's all I'm caring about because I think it's vice versa. Now, again, this is my opinion, but that with subscription-based apps, I feel like, monetization drives retention whereas games it's vice versa right like retention drives monetization so yeah that that's i think that's well said and in a sense that makes the um the threshold for success for people making games a little bit higher because yes, if yeah. you don't provide value up front and it's you know it has to be a really good game then you're never going to get anyone on the back end you're never going to get people watching ads and they'll definitely not buy your IAPs. That, I mean, that's even farther. We tend to see, I think, ads being primary and then, oh, I really like this game, so I'm going to spend some money on it or my kid's going to spend some money on it. I think that's yeah. that may be a slight difference in, or maybe it's a, a fairly big difference between between a subscription or a, 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 an app that's maybe something you pay for up front, right? You have to pay something totally. to try it. Yeah. Well, I think you just need so many more downloads too as a game, right? Mm -hmm. you come correct me if you think I'm wrong, Luke's, because we were working with one client that was getting about 50 downloads a day, and then we're able to make some different product changes, and then he went from like a dollar a day to like boom, instantly, no additional downloads, $17 a day, just from the product changes. Whereas a game, I don't know if we're going to see that big of an impact right off the bat, unless we're like changing some, e, you know, like minimum eCPM type of metric and showing more video ads or just bombarding users. We're probably not going to see that big of an impact on revenue without additional downloads, right? So I feel like you have to get more and more downloads for a game. You want your monthly active users, daily active users. That's what you care most about from a game perspective. Right. So from from a marketing, yeah, I mean that makes sense. From a from a marketing perspective, getting people to just download. What have you seen be most impactful in the short term? Like influencer campaigns, yep. Uh just paid campaigns, just grinding on paid campaigns and 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 doing variations, <laughs> organic. I mean, what have you seen be most impactful? Let me ask you this, Luke. Is your audience like more indie game developers? Are they the big guys where, you know, they've got a big marketing budget so they can rely on running a lot of Facebook ads and stuff like that? Where do they fall in? Usually? It's a fair mix, but I mean all almost nearly all indie developers of different of different sizes. I mean, some people are just starting out, they've built their first game and they're just beginning to accept this thought or realize, wait a second. Uh, I started making games because I like games. Wait a second. I could, wait a second. I could <laughs> I could turn this into a business. But then as soon as you make that leap, then you have to start then you see how big the mountain is, right? And you 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 realize that if this is going to be a business, I need to do a lot of things. I have to start thinking about marketing. I have to seriously tackle ASO. I've got to I've got to make sure that my game economy is balanced. There's so much more that you have to do, right? So I would say that's the vast majority of of the audience um, okay. that we're reaching, but to larger studios as well. All right. So one of my favorite campaigns, and this is more for the indie guys out there, the smaller guys who may not have tens of thousands of dollars to spend on marketing a month, but it's called an app advice campaign. It's the app advice apps gone free campaign. Now this may eat into your monetization, so make sure you can run this with like, anyways, I'll explain that. So it's like a Groupon for apps. And essentially you have to give something paid that's normally paid away for free. So for games, that's typically gonna be either 
if you have banner ads, they don't want that, right? They don't mind rewarded stuff, rewarded video, all that stuff is fine. But if you have banner ads, they don't want ads, especially if you don't, you know, if you have interstitial, right? They all fall in the same bucket. So you're gonna have to make you remove ads for free. But if you don't right. have any of these ads, you can give away virtual currency, virtual characters, virtual anything that is typically that people would have to pay for it, you make it free. And then you tell App Advice, there's Tyler at App Advice, you say, hey Tyler, I'm making this free. It's normally cost $4.99, but all new users within the next two days will get this for free. And then because they've got such a huge audience, you're able to drive downloads. And we've seen the retention be really solid, the downloads are super solid. And the cool thing, Luke, is you can run this every other month. Obviously, the first time you run it, it's going to be the best time. You're going to get the biggest downloads. But the worst we've done in terms of downloads is 800. For games, it can go into the tens of thousands. And so what I compare this to an Apple feature, whereas like an Apple feature, you might get one feature. This is something you can run every other month. We have people that we've taught how to do this, past clients who run this literally every single month. I see them on all the time. So that's a quick win. And if you're just soft launching, it's a great way to see what your retention metrics are going to look like. So right. if you're not like a big publisher, you don't have money to get that first 1,000, 5,000, 10,000 downloads just to see the retention, well, you can quickly run this just to see what your retention numbers will look like because they are that, good users. That's interesting. So it, not looking at it so much from the standpoint of how many of those people will ultimately become, let's say, how many of those people are going to buy other IEPs, but let's just get people in the door and see what they do. Yeah. So from that standpoint, that sort of campaign. Yeah, that makes sense. Luke, actually, we've seen higher, especially for games, we see higher IAP purchases when you make one of your IAP purchases for free. And also, I want to give you guys some numbers. So for one of our apps that we ran it on, it was a game too. I, I shared all the numbers. And I said, look, I made this, I got 10,000, let's say, it was around that mark, 10,000 downloads in a matter of a couple of days. And IAP purchases, it wasn't like huge, you know, thousands of dollars, but it was like $100 or so. IAP purchases increased and the um, only 11% of the downloads took advantage of that remove ads. So you're thinking, man, I'm giving, I'm getting 10,000 downloads, that's going to kill my retent my monetization because everybody's going to remove their ads no some people are going to forget and they're not going to take advantage of it or some people just so you just want to bring a lot of users right you're just bringing a lot of foot traffic so in. it generates the buzz but that doesn't mean people yes. are actually going to pull the trigger on that yeah that's interesting would you recommend that one as the top one the remove ads remove banners uh promo yeah i mean you, yeah. the the way to do it is you have to make something for free so yeah. typically with games, it's easy because it's remove ads. But if you're like a uh, clash of clans or even a, a crossy road, right? Where you don't really have ads, you're not monetizing off of that one. It could be a free character like within crossy road, right? You just make it for free. Right. It's no, normally 199, but this or 99, this guy Gangnam style guy is for free, right? Like, all right, cool. You can do it that way. Yeah, too. that was a, that was a big, uh, a big partnership. Um, that, that right. was, yeah, that was huge for, for crossy road. And the uh, BTS chickens as well. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen the BTS chickens. Just check that yeah, out. yeah. We, we so we've got we uh, so we did we did a, a course on a couple other aspects of making making games, and the mm. CEO talks about the uh, the story of the the BTS chickens. They sent um, they sent Crossy Road chickens to the members of BTS. And then BTS tweeted out all of the Crossy Road chickens, and they did several tweets, and the oh, game wow. exploded in in Korea. Wow! Yeah, that that's great. That's the guerrilla war stuff. That's guerrilla war. About. That's the yeah. guerrilla warfare s sort of style yeah. of marketing. Let's send send this boy band stuffed chickens and see what happens. But you never know because you're in someone else's hands, know. right? Yeah. Um. What What are some of the rookie mistakes? that you see pretty often where people uh, and we don't have to focus just on games but let's say it's a game build a game want to make it a business but they just don't know what they're doing what are some of the common rookie mistakes that you see uh most often the obvious one the game sucks all right like not really <laughs> testing that might be a slightly deeper cool. issue 
<laughs> they think it's cool and i'm like uh yeah. it's all right i've seen a bunch of these and they always think it's a cool idea that i have never seen I'm like bro i've seen this so, so let's mean, get like, that out don't don't make don't make a clone is what you're saying don't make a clone like, don't do don't another flappy bird simple. yeah yeah like really do your research and when i look at color switch when you look at crossy road like it's the little things that make it really stand out right like color switch i always use this example because it blew up but and it wasn't the first style of game that I saw. I saw another game called Flight that had the same mechanic where something was going up and you had to go through an obstacle and it just kept going up. But I thought Color Switch did really well. It was like, it's changed the colors. It was like, oh, you know this color switching? And David talks about this too, but this color switching element that you see in Uno and Simon says, why don't we, instead of just like a feature, why don't we make it a, the Bane, the main character, the main right. function. And I really liked that. And I was like, oh, it's a little subtle things. And you know, my father in law was like, hey, this crossy world is just like Frogger. I'm like, no, you play Frogger? That shit is boring, right? Like Crossy World is really actually really fun. And so get that out of the way. But I think the rookie mistakes is not doing enough like just soft launch for a game, right? Like going out there, making sure your game is retaining is monetizing, is doing all the things. And we did everything right. We, we had a client, a game, so well done. It was like solitaire meets words with friends, right? You had to build words, but it was a solitaire type of element. The design was awesome. The game element was awesome. But, and we got it featured by Apple, a prominent Apple feature using that WWC trick. I went yeah. there personally for him and we were able to get that feature. But essentially it, it ended up failing because the retention wasn't strong, which meant the monetization wasn't strong. So we did everything right. We did, we even did the soft launch and everything else and we got it into the top like word games under in the Nordic country. So we did everything right, right? All the checklists, the main best practice checklist, check, 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 check out, but still we failed. And so it is key to make sure your retention and your monetizations are locked, locked and loaded. And retention is gonna be key. I think that's what Matthew Hall said. He's like, look, I didn't care about monetization. I'll figure that out if right. I got retention right, because I'll figure out how to make money. That's not, that's the easy part. The hard part is our users coming back into your game. Right. What, yeah. So, so going on that then, yeah. what things do you see being most important for that retention? Is it, is yeah. it story? Is it just a, addictive gameplay? Is it novelty? What are, what are some of those things? I think it's so app dependent, Luke. But yeah, you know, like some people depend on story, right? They're like, hey, story drives the retention. Sure. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the app. But if we're talking about like casual apps, I think it's going to be the game, the gameplay, making sure there's a core loop within the gameplay too, right? And so what is it that brings people back? I really like, if you want to talk like tactically, I really like the daily reward stuff. I think it does something to you and be like, oh, okay. I really like having the what you refer to the, you correct me if I'm wrong, but like the game economy making me spend money to play a certain game. So I'll point to phase 10 and I, when I play that game, I'm like, oh, I have to use these coins to play a free game. And then I run out of coins, like I got to wait. And so that mechanic brings people back because they want to come back, right? Like those growing plants, growing your army within Clash of Clans. One of the, my past podcast guests who used to work for Black, backflip studios he was talking about like he monetizes off of impatience right and so i was like hey that's brilliant well, that's what I, candy crush candy crush is the master of that right yeah yeah so <laughs> tactically you can do stuff like that but the tactics are there like people have shared enough there on that but those are like tactically things that you can do like after right. a game you show a rewarded video all that helps your monetization but at the end of it all that will fail if you don't have a high retaining game and if that's so hard to say like what to do there because right. that i don't know i honestly don't know yeah i mean and it's also because it's a moving target it's not something yeah. that's fixed because it's part of the it's part of the zeitgeist what people find interesting in 2015 is fundamentally different than what people will find engaging in 2025 that's two different worlds two different planets you know like a perfect example of this i would imagine that Dr. Mario was a fairly addictive game back when I was a kid, you know, Game Boy Color, Dr. Mario. Well, they're, yes, Nintendo is, they're unplugging that game, I think next month. They made a mobile version. A apparently nobody's playing it and they're shutting it down. I mean, I don't know if it's because they just failed on the IAP side or what, but right, right. they're shutting it down. And I think it might be just because people find Candy Crush more fun than 
Dr. Mario because it's pills yeah. and it's not that interesting. There's more stuff to play, so it's a different world. You yeah. Know? And I don't think what, like, and I say this with apps too, you don't talk enough to your users. I think a lot of times these developers, mm -hmm. they just build on their own, try to get it out there, and then they just kind of wait. Let's look at the numbers. Like, no, like, there's value in literally talking to people, doing user testing, making sure that you qu you have quantitative, qualitative data to be like, hey, what are they most excited about? Like, if you tell a feature and they're like, yeah, that's cool, it ain't that cool, right? Like, you need the feedback of, whoa, that's amazing. That's a cool feature that you have. And I don't think a lot of developers do enough of just being able to talk to your users, like really understanding how, what your users are getting value from your app. I think that's where it gets into, especially for slightly larger indie studios, game community management, where you start yeah. actually building your own community in the game. And then you have, you know, super users who are giving you feedback all the time and you're getting a lot of stuff back as often as possible, so then you can iterate the game and it's responsive to the player base, particularly for yeah. games. Yeah. Well, um, we, we spent a little time talking about marketing, but I just wanted to ask one more uh, question about that quickly. So, uh, I mean, you shared a couple of things, but if, if, if I'm starting out, okay, I want to have a small marketing budget, let's say. I want to do a thing. Okay, I've just built my first game. I want to do something. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you gave, you know, you gave one great idea. But if I was going to focus on a branch, should I try to get an influencer? Like, should I try to get yeah. somebody to play my game, or is it more impactful that I just say spend money on a campaign? What would you do with a few thousand dollars? I think influencer marketing, especially for games, would be the one thing. And we saw Among Us really take off because of influencer marketing. And so I think with Minecraft. games, it's, yeah, yeah. So like, I think influencer marketing is where I would probably spend most of my time. Mm -hmm. Not for that hack that I Just gave Just for to. ROI. Yeah. 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 Well, the I hack is, so. yeah, the yeah. hack is good too. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's. It's all right. <laughs> it's good. It's good. <laughs> um, and then, I mean, you, yeah, because you have to have a, fairly sizable budget to capitalize yeah. on a campaign because you have to you have to be willing and ready to run those fairly long term in order to find the right the right audience. Um, yeah. And I mean, UA is very expensive, of course. Uh, you you did a video about Reddit. I wonder if so. How what do you think about about Reddit as a as a a way to get signups for apps in general as a way to get people to play a game, for example? Uh, is that a pretty powerful platform, do you think? Or, or uh, a lot of people maybe don't think about Reddit as a place to advertise. Yeah, that's probably, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to create that. But yes, I do think so. Because it's a great community. There's a bunch of subreddits. And it's like, if you're willing to put in the work, Luke, you're going to see success on Reddit, right? Like one of my past guests, he was like, he built an app idea out of a Reddit community. He's like, hey guys, mm. I'm thinking about building an app like this. Would you guys use it? It was a help you quit smoking weed. And then he went to the subreddit, he talked about to the users, started making it because he can code and just really started building it up and then got in-app purchases, switched to subscriptions, 3 x his revenues. And so it works. Like he didn't have, an, he just had an app idea and he was like going into Reddit and continually going in there to communicate with the audience. And so there's a ton of like indie game subreddits. It, we've seen good success on there and so people are willing to do it, but you have to be willing to put in the work. You can't just be like, hey, can I just post this one thing and then mm -hmm. expect thousands of downloads? No, you got to you gotta communicate well, with the audience. Well, they're going to ban too. you from their subreddits are territorial. <laughs> they will not like that. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's like Indie Game Saturday. I don't know. There's a, but The subreddits all have their rules, but like you can post your game in there. I've seen a lot of gameplay type of videos and you never know like what's going to happen. So go in there, do the leg work, do the sweat equity, right? The hand-to-hand -hand combat type of work in there but I, I love that platform yeah so do i i mean it's a great place to at least get insights about where people are right now in different yeah. in different aspects because those communities are th that's as real as you get on the internet basically you know, there's no <laughs> there's no polish on reddit which is it's yeah. amazing that reddit has stayed fairly pure all this time and it's still I fairly know. pure it's amazing i know um well I want to I want to just ask in general uh, what stuff in whether it's for your business or in the 
you know, in, in apps in general, what stuff is on the horizon that you're, this is my last question, that you're most excited about? Or what are you really excited about now, either working on with App Masters or mm -hmm. in the gaming or app space in general? Subscriptions. I think that's it. Like, mm -hmm. it's just, I know it's been, it's an older answer, but I, I'm still bullish on subscriptions. I think from a marketing perspective, we've seen Apple search ads be one of the best channels for retention, monetization, all that stuff. With games, it's a little bit hard for ASO because, uh, you know, we worked with a lot of game publishers in the past and it's just like, what do you focus on? And a lot of the, what they focus on is like the screenshots, you know, the icons, those type of like outside of the keyword thing, because depending on the type of game you, you're building, there might not be any keywords traffic on that. So I want to add that loop too, like from an ASOS perspective, unless it's like puzzles and people are looking for this type of game or brain teasers, if you're doing a color switch or a crossy road, nobody's searching for that type of stuff. So brand is more important on that front but like from a keyword perspective nobody's searching for that so you don't really have to do aso depending on the type of game you're building but isn't i think there subscription, a basic degree I think, though i mean i'm is, sorry i mean isn't there a basic aso you have to do like i mean you want to still make sure that you have an appealing icon and oh yeah are clear, yeah right? I mean, I, that, I there's just like groundwork i see okay yeah. okay of course screenshots Beautiful screenshots, beautiful icons, all super important. I meant from a keyword perspective. I think sure. when most people think about ASO, they think about keywords. And then right. I want to make sure the audience knows, hey, when you think about ASO, especially for games, keywords probably not that important depending on the type of game. But yeah, obviously the big guys are just A-B testing the crap out of screenshots, icons, and all that stuff. So that's mm -hmm. what you got to do as well. But I think subscriptions, I think we, we've seen games starting to dabble into this subscription mindset. And I think we've just seen huge success from an app non-game perspective running subscriptions like my friend who 3x is revenues switching from in-app purchases to subscriptions so I'm very i love subscriptions just makes is that sense. where is that where it's going with apple arcade and i mean where do you see that in for four or five years build your own subscriptions like i think okay. apple's got a huge problem i think a lot of people are trying to get outside of the app store and onto different well, yeah. platforms getting people to pay outside of the app stores but yeah like i've seen it on my own business we we started doing some subscription based plans for our marketing services and we've seen some great success from an ltv that's the number that you got to be really focused on lifetime value of the of a user when you have a subscription that just like skyrockets Right. So right. I think if you can get people onto a yearly subscription of some sort, that's probably the best way to go for your business. Yearly subscription because is it because people are actually more engaged or yearly subscription because people are locked in and they're more likely to forget at the end of a year that they got it and it re-ups? Yeah. <laughs> Honest answers. <laughs> no, like if you think about lifetime value, right, that's the holy yeah. grail. That's the number sure. that you want to aim for. How would I get as high of a lifetime value as I can? Mm -hmm. So we've seen less churn with subscriptions. Or, I'm sorry, on yearly, the yearly. On the yearly. On the yearly yeah. subscription, right? Like less churn there. And then on the monthly, if you think about it, most, on average, monthly users are going to stay on about three, three and a half months. And mm -hmm. so if you just start doing the math, like one of my friends who has a game, he started doing that. And he's like, you know what? Even if I convert less users, I make way more. If I get ROI people onto the year. So he just got rid of his monthly all the way. And he, I think it's, I forget what the numbers were, but he doubled his revenues. Yes, he gets less conversions, but the revenues numbers shot up because he took away right. the monthly option and just got people onto the yearly. So subscriptions, content based type of apps, games, you can, if you're content based, phew, so easy, right? Easy to maintain. It's just all more content, but the gameplay is all the same. So if you think about like, I don't know, strategy type, I don't want to call people out and have everybody flood into this type of game, but there are games and category of games out there where it's content based and you can make a pretty good living off of that stuff. Yeah, that, I, I, it makes sense. I've seen, you know, services going, going that way, uh, go, I mean, going from monthly to yearly. So yeah. I guess in the future we'll see. We'll see people doing yearly memberships for their games. Although I wonder, I wonder how many have done that successfully so far. I mean, it doesn't seem like a a major trend yet, but very well could become that. And yeah. I think, you know, obviously, 
uh, Apple is paving the way there uh, with with their subscription. But um, I don't know. I don't quite know how Apple's subscription if that's going to really help most small developers or not, or to what extent? Yeah, arcade. Have it? Yeah. Probably not. Yeah. From what I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. Is there is there is it a different economy? Do you think is it is it a whole new world of optimizing your app specifically for arcade or getting in different collections? Is it the same world as the uh, you know just dis- discovering an app, or is this is this a whole new landscape? Are we in a new wild west with Apple Arcade? I honestly, I mean, this is just one man's opinion, but like I wouldn't even think about Apple Arcade as a option if i were an indie i would think about working with a bigger publisher if i want to do that or trying to stay independent and just mm-hmm. figuring it out right there's been a lot yes for all the misses and for all the failures out there, there's a lot of big successes of just indie app studios and doing it right like they're they're not the biggest but they're sustainable and so depending on your goal i've just heard from you know, it's just anecdotal data but from the people that I've worked with, they're like, hey, you know, Apple reached out, we want to do this, but the the, met- the numbers just didn't make sense for us. And so they yeah. said no, right? So I don't think it's worth it unless you're really desperate, but I would just try to build it myself. I mean, that's that's how I feel. And, or work with the publisher. You heard it here. Don't do it unless you're really desperate. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, I, I was giving away some of these like really crazy tactics. Like back in the day, you you could put like, keywords into app store reviews so you can buy app store reviews put keywords in there and that would like just shoot up your keyword rankings like one or two keywords i like to snap a lot obviously but like one or two keywords reviews with the right keywords in there would shoot up your keyword rankings and i was doing i was giving this presentation at at an event and then after my presentation was done i i go to the bar just hanging out with a few of the friends that i was with and the guy he's at the bar and he's like hey good presentation i was like oh thanks you know, I was like, where do you, where do you work? And he's like, shows me his badge. He's like, Apple. And I was like, oh shoot, <laughs> like I'm giving away a lot of like black hat type of stuff at yeah. for Apple. So he, I'm not... yeah, was he undercover? <laughs> yeah. They are always undercover, dude. He had his badge inside his jacket because I think they're going to be bombarded with everybody if they, if people knew that they work for Apple. They're just, people are just going to come up to them. So they're probably used to it. Was that is that was uh, just to be clear that is that an outdated hack or is that still still valid? yeah it's outdated hack okay okay so some of these things have a, a short expiration they probably he probably left after your talk and said okay guys we got to change it now exactly uh, he knows Steve knows <laughs> I've been trying to be careful with oversharing some of that stuff because that was so cool and such an easy hack that I just discovered because you think about like Yelp and Google user generated right. content, the keywords in this user generated content helps everything. So I was just like, I think this might work. Let me try this out. And it did. And then once I overshared well, it, it, just stopped. Yeah, people probably weren't that. thinking that the that the that stuff coming from users was even being looked at by by yeah. Apple. That's yeah, that was the assumption. Yeah, it's very interesting. Good hunch, yeah. good hunch. But you uh, should have kept it undercover, like the um, uh, what's the What's what's that project in World War II that they did? I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. They had to keep it secret when they were. They knew all the German codes, but they had to keep it secret. Oh right, right, right. I know what you're talking about. I have no idea yeah. what it's called. <laughs> I, for, I forget. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, that was my last question. So, Steve, I really appreciate all the insights. This has been this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for uh, for doing this. Thanks for having me, man. This was fun.